My last video is a great general overview of Raid Pokemon. If you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it first, or better yet, read the guide that I've continuously updated since its publication. That'll be in the description. They're both great tools for those that want to prepare in-depth for raids. But with that said, I wanted to give guidance that is a bit more succinct for players that may not want a massive roster ready to go, but would rather have a small team that covers the vast, vast majority of easy raids. We'll definitely have use for the harder raids. If you're familiar with the 2080 rule, this is the 20% of effort that would equate to 80% of successful outcomes, basically the work smarter, not harder team. We're going to be building Sun. Sun has the largest damage output where weather is allowed on a neutral target. And in plenty of real world cases, even when weather is not allowed, Excadrill, for example. For calculation comparisons, we're using Mew because it has 100 in every stat. Sun beats out rain quite a bit due to solar power blast burn, reckless flare blitz, and overheat all doing massive damage compared to Rain's Hydro Cannon, Hydro Pump, and Brine where the boss is below 50%. Let's look at how this will come together in a team. For the six, we have Charizard, Murkrow, Darmanitan, Chandelure, Volcarona, and Porygon Z. You may be thinking, wait, I thought we were building Sun. Adaptability Stab Hyper Beam is one of the best damage dealers against anything that doesn't resist or immune normal type even factoring in when it would compete with other types doing super effective damage. Additionally, item diversity becomes important as the best gem users of other types will often out damage the third or fourth damage dealers of the same type all vying for choice item and gem use with a significant drop off after those using life orb or type boosting items down to 30 and 20%. It uses a unique item for this in normal gem. This gives you a great Pokemon that could be splashed onto almost any raid team you could assemble which is why I'm recommending it first. For its build, I recommend Mild or Rash because you do not want it to live a second turn, so fainting is better. For IVs and EVs, max damage and max special attack, the rest don't really matter. Higher HP and lower defenses is theoretically better to make Porygon Z a bit more attractive a, a target to the AI, but I wouldn't sweat it. Special thank you to Petrowski for making this for me as part of his Twitch points rewards. A link to his stream is in the description. Charizard is in a league of its own with regards to damage output. When weather is allowed, solar power boosted blast burn under sun will likely do damage cap on pretty much any neutral target. It may even do so with minimal item boosts. I would recommend spending on the hidden ability now, but even if you can't afford it, Charizard without solar power is still one of the top damaging Pokemons and you can always use an ability patch later. As far as nature goes, I recommend milder rash, just like Porygon Z. Most of the time you want it to die after clicking Blast Burn, which is the fire type equivalent of Hyper Beam, and then the same max speed, max special attack, and the rest don't matter. You could potentially make yours bulky to live an attack, as you can always click Fire Blast with Evasion Support or Weather Ball where that is not available, and then later click Blast Burn where you may not live to see another turn. And speaking of Evasion Support, Murkrow is the only purely utility Pokemon I'm recommending here. That's because its Prankster moveset is by far the best compared to the others, making it very splashable. I'll run down each move. Defog is going to be one of the most utilized moves in endgame raids. Evasion drops were not shrugged off by bosses as a point of intentional design from the developers. That enables types that would otherwise have accuracy problems to have much more consistent damage output. A single Defog makes high jump kick, hydro pump, and head smash hit 100% of the time. It will also conveniently make the hyper beam and equivalent moves one hit 100% of the time, so that there are no risks of misses on such high damage output 90% accuracy moves. Sweet Sense minus two stages will be necessary for things like Thunder and Hurricane outside of Rain, Focus Blast, or any of the other 70% moves, but Defog will see the lion's share of use. Tailwind is a bit more obvious. Against harder raids, if you didn't outspeed, you simply lost. Getting Tailwind up with Prankster is a necessity, and Murkrow's high base speed could allow it to still function well in some cases where Prankster is not available, either through the opponent being dark type or an ability suppression mechanic. Haze was incredibly useful for removing boss defensive buffs. That equates to a huge amount of value when you consider that moving a plus one or plus two physical or special defense boost is just damage gained for every attack thereafter. This was very useful for boss and rages, or just guaranteed defense boosts via automatic moves. Screech will be a good button to click in the rare event that you need to do something, and none of the other moves you have available would provide value. There may be instances where you have damage dealers not hitting the damage cap, and that can mean a few extra percent of damage gained across all attacking Pokemon before the debuff gets shrugged off. This is the most replaceable option of the move set. You could run 
Thunder Wave to paralyze a boss or add in rare instances, but uh, more in depth on the additional support moves Murkrow has in my written guide. All of these moves allow Murkrow to be useful in almost any phase of the fight. It can be used as a lead for Tailwind or Defog, or be brought in later to haze off stat boosts or refresh Tailwind. And at a pinch, get some damage boost up for physical attackers. Compare this to other prankster users like Sableye, for instance. Screens and Wisp were wonderful when we had little information on raids and poor toolkits that had to be kept alive to do enough damage to take down a boss. With meta damage dealing teams, being kept alive is not necessary for the vast majority of raid fights and detrimental in some cases as Pokemon using Hyper Beam type moves or using gems only want to live one turn. If screens or burn are clicked instead of dealing damage, you are simply wasting a turn. That's not to say that Staple Eye won't be useful in harder fights where the damage reduction is necessary, but I don't see it being anywhere as useful for coordinated teams that are burning down bosses as fast as possible. Whimsicott also saw a bit of use, but is just a slightly worse version of Murkrow in that it does not have haze access. Darmanitan has the ability Sheer Force, which removes additional effects of moves in exchange for more damage. This makes Flare Blitz, even where weather is not accessible, one of the highest damage outputs possible from any Pokemon. And where you can set Sun, it makes it the best physical option. This makes Darmanitan the choice band user on this team. It could be built adamant or lonely or, or naughty. Theoretically, it would be better to try to keep it alive with adamant as there's no penalty for clicking Flare Blitz twice in a row, but it's extremely unlikely due to the recoil of Flare Blitz. Chandelure and Volcarona are great dual types that are also top of the fire damage dealers. This gives you a bit of versatility down the road where either secondary type may be useful, but Ghost and Bug are not premier offensive types. They could see some niche use though on certain raid fights. I'd recommend building these modest and generally strong in bulk stats because they see so much use beyond raids. Though you could make budget versions of these dedicated to raids that are mild or rash with weaker bulk stats, as their best attacking move, Overheat, makes surviving additional turns less desirable. Each has great utility that could be used in a pinch as well, but with that said, they are the most replaceable, as there are other great fire types you may already have to fill in these last two slots. Honorable mentions to Embor, Reckless Flare Blitz is also incredible, but not as great as Darm, so slightly worse as a choice band user, and much more expensive in that you need to consume a fire ability patch. Still a very worthwhile mon to have for sure, but just not as prioritized in this team building exercise. Typhlosion, if you have one, as clicking Eruption or Blast Burn would still do a massive amount of damage under Sun. So you could bring that over something like Chandelure or Volcarona in a pinch. Moltres is also a wonderful overheat clicker with its great base stats and utility. Could be brought over Chandelure or Volk. Uh, Infernape is another Blast Burn user with the option for Focus Blast as a dual type. It's not as great for each of its respective typings, but still very useful for either and a great early mon to have, giving you multiple type options. These mentions are just replacements for the fire damage dealers. Once you do have a full team, I would sooner start building out additional type Pokemon before adding to the Sun team because ultimately you can only bring six. And in many cases, type diversity becomes very important due to gem damage boosts. Instead of adding more fire type damage dealers, I would recommend building out a rain team, potentially Empoleon, Samurott, Crawdon, Amistar, and Vaporeon, or start to fill out one or two of each of the good offensive types. Things like Rampardos or Archaeops for head smash. Note that it's an egg move on Archaeops, so watch out for that. Ampharos, Minun, Plusle for electric. Hydreigon is like a baby Porygon Z, and that Draco is neutral to almost everything, making it a very splashable Dragon Gem user. Uh, Metacham, Heracross, Hitmonlee for fighting. All of those are great to get you going. You may be thinking, why no Ninetales or Torkoal to set weather? A group of four players only needs one drought Pokemon. And hypothetically, if you don't have one, you can just grab an adequate level Torkoal or Ninetales just to set sun. There's only marginal benefit of bringing one properly prepared and trained drought Pokemon. And if everyone brought a weather setter, you're wasting a lot of damage. So if you were to duplicate this team across four people, it's much better to have all damage dealers and add a just single throwaway weather setter on one of the teams rather than having it duplicated across four teams. So basically you want to prepare to do as much damage as possible and then in a pinch set weather if no one else is able to. A lot of you may be asking yourself, what about Metagross, Reuniclus, or Ferrothorn? 
I touched on this topic a bit in the last video, but I still get questions about this, so I'm going to discuss it again. I'm going to refer to these three as crit me not sweepers, as if they get crit, they faint, which you may recall was quite problematic in a slacking raid or otherwise frustrating if you got hacked in other raids. It may seem appealing to breed one or two of these, as given the right conditions, they could carry an entire fight alone. This is a wonderful trait when we had limited knowledge and needed very quick solutions that could win the first raids and in some cases just solo carry them. But as raids got more difficult, they very quickly lost steam. Oftentimes they would struggle to set up, or in some cases not set up at all like the Excadrill and Gyarados raids for example. Metagross in particular was so good because you didn't need to prepare it at all. Its learn set enabled it to be the first few bosses. It didn't require EV training, it didn't require good IVs, and it didn't require TMs. The notion of now preparing a Metagross ahead of time to do exactly what it did without preparation is a bit silly to me, where that prep time could be devoted to likely much more useful Pokemon. Overall, I foresee a future where, as people are looking to fill out more for their team of four, they're going to want to synergize well with each other, and you could very well see something like looking for two more for the Conkledor raid needs Sun team. If you're bringing a Reuniclus that takes six turns to set up to do 7% damage on that seventh turn, People may not want to bring you along when they could just add someone that makes the fight go a lot faster. Make your sun team, don't get left behind.